got one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-51. When last we listened in on our adventurers, we discovered that the captain of the watch, Edmund Tolly, had been killed by Cornwall, leader of the Green Sash Gang. After hitting it off with the charming guard leader, Karina took the news poorly, as did Fargus, who had previously faced off with the man in their first meeting. The Colby Magistrate had ordered fresh mounts for the party to go after the murderer. We rejoined them an hour into the trip. She doesn't even know where she's going, remarked Lady Irena as the adventurers stopped their horses. Cabe Silverton gave a loud whistle, causing the wave to turn around. Angrily, she spurred her horse back to the stationary group and began to ask them what their problem was. Fargus, clearly upset with her recklessness, did a deep sigh before chastising the young woman. First, you don't know where you're going, and you are going in the wrong direction, according to Benson, as the guard nodded. Second, you need to calm down. You go into this mess without a plan, and we'll be burying you along with... But a harsh glance from Sister Elaine caused the man to stop. An angry look from Karina softened as a tear ran down her cheek. Looking up to the sky, she wiped it away and admitted she was acting rashly. She apologized, stating that she just wanted justice. The group looked to Benson and inquired how much further the trip would be. The guard pointed to a small copse of trees and stated that the farmhouse was just on the other side of the grove. The group discussed their options and ruled out that a rash approach would be poor and a cautious approach through the woods would probably be the best option. Using the trees as cover, they could see what they were getting themselves into. They dismounted and led their horses into the tree line and secured them to some limbs before advancing on foot. As they reached the edge of the grove, they could see two horses in the field and one guard's body in the grass nearby. Benson pointed out the body belonged to Morak, one of the guards, and he was too close to the farmhouse to retrieve the body on the initial escapade. The ranger asked Cabe and Irena to advance and use their superior elven sight to check on the occupants. The pair creeped up slowly, and it was the mage who spotted movement. Uh, I have one figure, possibly human, moving about inside. If you look to the second window next to the big hole, said the mage. Cabe confirmed her opinion, but neither could say for sure if it was Cornwall. The group formulated options and decided to move through the trees to get to the back side of the building and try and stay out of sight. The group spread out and successfully got around to the back, but quickly discovered that the large section of wall was missing from the farmhouse. A moment later, a large spear exited the old building and embedded itself into a tree near Karina's face. Scatter! yelled out Fargus, fearing that more missiles would be headed their way. As the group divided themselves, a large net scooped up Sister Elaine, Benson, Bulger, and Cabe Silvertongue, sending them ten feet into the air. A second spear zipped through the trees and pinned Lady Arena's traveling cloak to the tree. Karina and Fargus turned, but Arena yelled for them to go get that son of a bitch. The pair sped off, clearing the trees, and moved quickly towards the farmhouse. A figure inside emerged and was armed with a pair of crossbows firing off bolts at each. Diving into separate directions, the adventurers managed to dodge the bolts as the figure sank back into the darkness. Karina ran to the back wall, while Fargus opted to move to the corner, splitting the two and putting them out of sight from each other. Not knowing if Karina was okay, the ranger grabbed his blade and took a deep breath before plunging into the darkness. A moment later, his eyes grew accustomed to the darkness, and he observed a figure move towards one of the upright beams holding up the second floor. Dodging debris, he went after the subject, but was immediately struck by bolts through a hole in the ceiling. A leg injury slowed him significantly, and he attempted to find cover, 
smashing through an old table sending shards in every direction. A rapid fire of bolts filled the air with several more striking the armored man, injuring him significantly. Dragging himself back against the wall, he realized he was in deep trouble. A figure leaped from the second floor of the ruined building holding a crossbow. Fargus immediately recognized his assailant as Cornwall. Well, well, we meet again, sneered the bandit leader. How do you like my crossbow of speed? I call it my little friend. Cornwall lowered the weapon and fired two more rounds into the injured ranger, who winced in pain from bolts in his arm and his foot. Don't worry, young one. I'll end it for you quick. Then go find that tasty winch you were here with. Cornwall raised the crossbow again, but as he pulled the trigger, he was struck from behind. Karina had spotted his outline and smashed into the man's back just as he fired. The bolt veered to one side of Fargus's head and stuck into the old barrel he was leaning against. Cornwall kicked the waif off of him, sending her smashing into debris, causing dust to swirl up. He quickly sprang to his feet and unsheathed his weapon, wiping away blood from his forehead. You're a feisty one, he said as he spit on the floor. Karina unsheathed her weapon and crouched into fighting position, causing Cornwall to laugh. Oh, this will not go well for you, child. I will switch hands to make it a bit more fair for you. Anger filled the wave's face as she began to move side to side, trying to gauge her opponent's weakness, but saw none. Cornwall shook his head and smiled. Don't bother, girl. You don't have a chance. Fire filled the young woman's eyes at the taunting and she gripped her blade tightly. The experienced bandit spun his blade around his wrist and declared, It's dying time! And he raised his weapon to strike, but instead screamed loudly. Fargus had pulled out one of the bolts from his body and stabbed Cornwall in the lower leg. The pain shot through the bandit's body and Karina saw her chance. She lunged quickly and stabbed the man through the throat cutting off his howls of pain. He fell at the wave's feet, with her blade still embedded in his throat. Karina dropped down to help Fargus, who waved off her concerns. Get... get the cleric. Need healing. Karina nodded and sprang to her feet, exiting the structure, to find that the rest of the group had freed themselves and were sprinting across the open area. They entered the building and spotted both men on the ground. Hey guys, what took you so long? gasped a wounded Fargus, who was quickly attended to by Sister Elaine and Cabe Silvertop. Lady Irena, Benson, and Bulger examined Cornwall and pronounced him dead. The sailor pulled the bladed weapon out of his throat and cleaned it off on the dead man's cloak. Handing it back to Karina, he smiled and said, I think this belongs to you. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.